In this video, let's go over making a grill. Uh, this is just a sample generic car grill that I made in a Libre to kind of show that you can make patterns actually pretty easily uh, across kind of a NURBS like surface. And uh, yeah, it's not too hard to do. And it, you get a really cool result. And this works on a lot more stuff than just car grills, right? Anytime you need a grill that's a weird shape. Right, this could be a great method. So let's get started in a new part environment and let's activate a sketch. Um, and also in my view, I should like to show my planes and my sketches. So we'll go to the XY plane here and uh, we can start by making an outline of the grill. And that is probably going to be, let's start off with an arc. We'll grab a vertical relation. Right, so that we know that this thing ends on horizontal. We'll give this, um, in fact, let's dimension this in a way where we say from from here to here is 45 divided by two. We'll add a vertical from here to the arc's endpoint, so it ends on like right in the middle, and maybe from here to from there to there, we'll do a vertical dimension of two point five. That'd be 2.5, of course, off our origin. We'll move this up a little bit and we'll constrain that in just a second. Let's go with another arc. Now, of course, I'm doing this in the pro license. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to do all the functions I'm doing on the hobby license as well. I'm not using pro features to make this. So I had a tangent relation there. We're going to say a radius on this guy of 8.768. Let's go with another arc with another tangent relation. And that did not go tangent the way that I was hoping. Let's try that again. Nope. <laughs> There we go. This will be a bit smaller. How about 2.621? And another arc. Oh. I'll go with tangent. We'll take a vertical between this arc's center point and end point. And of course, that snapped in a way that I didn't quite want it to. So I'll move these close to vertical and reapply. Now, another vertical here. And of course, that made that. So let's give this a dimension instead of 71.17. Two and now dragging this over, right? Sometimes these sketches just take a little bit of finesse, I guess. So what should our vertical dimension here be? I guess I get to choose that. If I said two, it's not looking too bad. <laughs> Now, I'd ask where else do we have flexibility, right? It looks like this thing right here. So we'll simply give this a vertical dimension. How about 7.75? I'm going to make a line. We'll come up here and mirror our sketch elements. And we'll choose this 
of course, is our mirror axis, right? And we have something that looks like a modern car grill type of thing. Real simple and basic. So let's deactivate the sketch. We'll give this an extrude. Of course, I clicked the wrong extrude button. There we go. And I'll reverse that and we'll go something like negative 24 inches. Can't go really too deep uh, for our purposes here. Okay, let's go on the XY plane. We'll activate a sketch. So in the sketch, the first thing I'll do is grab a hexagon. We'll apply that. We'll make this line horizontal. We'll give this a vertical dimension of, let's say, an inch. We'll grab the center of this and make sure that it's vertical down the line. Maybe we'll grab coincident and make this right on the edge of our grill pattern, just like that. Next, I'm going to manually draw an elongated hexagon. We'll say that these lines are equal. Equal, good, all those are equal. Then we'll make these equal here. We'll grab some parallels just to make sure that we have the correct angles. So set this, you know, these elements parallel to the constrained hexagon. Uh, now I can set a dimension between these lines. And let's say a dimension of 0.1. Uh, let's give this line here, say, a 2-inch dimension. We'll make sure that we are horizontal here. Looks like we are. So let's add some, well, in fact, I could probably fix that up with an equal. There we go. So our degree of freedom, wow, that was a little wonkier than I was thinking it was. So we'll add a horizontal there. And that's actually exactly what I want. <laughs> Perfect. So we've done that. Uh, we can go ahead and do an extrude cut if we would like. So we'll deactivate the sketch, we'll extrude cut, we'll say through all. And now let's linear pattern this. Now we could do a sketch pattern, but, and this is true for SolidWorks and just about every other platform, when you do big sketch patterns, it takes more resources to rebuild than with doing feature patterns. Uh, that's an important tool if you have to do a lot of patterns. Uh, just know that patterns like what we're doing are processor heavy. This will take a while. So we're going to go pattern this feature. We're going to say pattern it along this vertical path. Uh, we want to space this at about 1.1. Yep, and there you can see we have somewhat of a consistent wall thickness that we are patterning. So this is looking pretty good. Whoops, I hit the wrong one though. So 1.1, and we'll keep hitting this up arrow. So this doesn't look like it's too heavy for right now, but this is gonna get heavy. So we've completed these patterns. Let's use another pattern in this direction. Uh, this time our space will be something like 3.328. And of course that will change depending on how you dimension your sketch will come this way, bam. So you can tell we're already getting a little bit more heavy. I'm trying to keep the pattern somewhat large to make sure that we don't uh, go up the exponential hill and past the point of huge amounts of computing. So it looks like eight is the correct number. Let's mirror our pattern. You can see how this just builds up on uh, recompute time, feature on feature. So we'll grab a mirror. Of course, it grabbed our pattern. And we won't have a complete mirror, right? Because if I grab my mirror plane and mirror this, 
then uh, we don't actually pattern our uh, root. So we'll add this cut into the mirror as well, and it should cut out that face for us. So we're going to say OK. And there's our grill so far. So a few more things that I think would be a good idea to do. Let's do another sketch on our plane here. And this time it should be quite easy with what I'm planning on doing. We're going to do a project a sketch and I'm going to just select all of the elements of my previous sketch and that way we can have kind of a nice border around our car grill. We'll maintain association and make sure that it's a sketch figure. Now, let me select everything that we just made, you know, for our sketch. And we'll go with an offset feature. Uh, let's say half an inch. So fully constrain this if you want to, because as you can see, it's not fully constrained at all. Uh, I'm going to, for the purposes of this video, not fully constrain it while recognizing that what I'm doing is not best practice. So constrain that sketch if you're doing anything serious. Let's do an extrude and remember our same length. We can add some de design intent in here if we wish. And uh, again, we're still rebuilding quite a lot. So your system may be running a little bit slower. What you're seeing here is my real-time system catching up with everything. But we can say go to geometry. And if I zoom in a little bit, I can select this face. And that way, if I update the depth of my grill, this extrude distance will update with it. So we're going to say OK on that. All right, so now I have a very, very thick grill that we can tone back a little bit. Um, I would like to do that with a loft. Um, so let's make a plane that references this plane. Um, I forget what the dimensions of my grill are. If I go 24 inches, yeah, a bit longer than 24, maybe 28. I'll edit my plane again and Twenty-eight, maybe twenty-six. Yep, so there's our grill. <laughs> of course. Of course. So instead of 26, we'll just move that out a little bit further. I should have said, you know, 45 divided by 2 plus some amount because I remember I did. Well, even then, that wouldn't have worked either now that I think about it. All right. So anyway, there's our plane. And uh, let's do another plane in the opposite direction. Twenty six point one, and we'll reverse it. Okay. So let's activate a sketch on the plane we've just made, and we can import some references pretty nicely. 
We'll go to project a sketch. We'll create a reference. Yes. Maintain association reference figure. We can import in fact this whole thing, right? So this gives us some flexibility in which we can work. Um, let's go with an arc starting way out here. Actually, let's do an arc way out here because the grill would probably be inclined to move backwards. You know how cars generally look. This is probably going to be the longest sketching part of the video. We'll grab a coincident, get these two points together. Dimension. We'll go with 30. Here, we'll say something like negative two. That should be enough. Get that about a 16 inch height. And uh, we'll deactivate our sketch. Uh, one thing though, I want to adjust this negative two. I realize I need to push this quite far back to cover the curvature of the grill, right? Maybe we can say a negative 10 could possibly work. It'd probably be easier just to go as far as possible. So negative 14. Yeah, let's go with that. So we'll deactivate the sketch again. All right, the plane that we've made again, I'm moving my view to make sure that I select the right one. Uh, we can again import some references. In fact, I think I only need to import one. So we'll go to project a sketch, create reference figure with maintained association and only the arc. We'll go with an arc here and we can add a few relations, uh, cocentric be an important one, gives us a uniform thickness. We'll go with a horizontal relation, make it horizontal with the top and the bottom. There we go. I love the feature that Libre has where if I have two concentric arcs, I can click on both of them and define a thickness. One looks okay. And now I'm just needing to draw myself a line. Again, you may notice your performance is affected a little bit because I made a big pattern right off the bat. If you're thinking that it would be faster to have done this mess and then done the pattern, you're probably right. I'll give that five and horizontal and vertical and we're fully constrained so we'll deactivate that sketch
So one thing that we can do if we wish is suppress our feature pattern and then unsuppress it later on. And that should uh, speed us up quite a bit. I can also suppress the uh, mirror, <clears throat> but because our feature pattern is suppressed, the mirror probably doesn't make that big of a difference. Next, our YZ plane is the one that runs right through the middle of our part. So we'll activate the sketch and then any tedious sketching that we would be doing is probably going to be over now. So we will create a line. I want to add a vertical relation so it ends right where we want it to. Yeah. And then, you know what, I do need to project probably something from this sketch. We'll maintain association reference figure, right? That gives us a point right at the bottom that I can say horizontal. And then There we go. Maybe we'll say four and we'll see how that looks. That might be kind of a dramatic grill shape, but it might be good too. We'll go with an arc. Well, I should probably draw my arc over here though. That's better. We'll go with horizontal arc center down here. Um, you know what? I can import this arc as a reference. So project with a reference figure here, maintain association. And we'll give this, you know what, maybe it'd be interesting to have a different radius here. So we'll do that. Let's say large radius, right? About a hundred. Now we'll take the top of our arc here and make it level here. And we'll go with a line around here. Great. Fully defined. Let's go back to our YZ plane, activate our sketch. We'll project this arc as a reference figure with maintained association. Arc down here. We'll go with cocentric. We'll go with the dimension. One, we'll go with horizontal. There we go. I'll give this a dimension here of, let's go with 20. Doesn't matter too much. Okay, that should be the end of our sketching. That is tedious. Except, you know what? I need to change my sketch plane. So if you sketch on the wrong plane like I did, right? I thought I was clicking the YZ plane. Um, I can just take a shortcut and do kind of a dependent sketch where this is projected. Again, if you're working on something super serious, maybe this wouldn't be an ideal workflow. I don't see too much consequence by having kind of a master sketch that drives the other one. So I'll just import my sketch elements as a quick way to recover from a mistake. I should have maintained association on that, but you all get the idea. Okay, sketch on our very last far end sketch. Let's project here with maintained association. 
fact, I want to go to Let's hide sketch seven. So there. And by height, I should say make it so that it's not selectable. Again, we'll maintain association here. And actually, that is probably enough. Oh, looks like I accidentally brought in some extras too. We'll say down and over. We'll go horizontal. Bam, right? So we deactivate that and one more sketch to do. We'll project and I can just choose sketch five. That's probably what I should have done earlier. And again, maintain association would be nice, but we're going fast in here. So let's do a lofted cut. We'll grab the first sketch right here, the second sketch here, and the third sketch here. And that makes kind of a cool curve shape. We also can specify uh, we want to uncheck minimize curvature. We can specify a tangent. Perhaps not here, but here and here. And we get, if we look from the top, kind of a nice curve. Now, so that would be our <laughs> front cut here. Uh, let's go to our cut loft back here, here, and here, and here. And the same thing, we want to make sure that we specify our tangents to give us a pretty consistent cut there. That's looking good. So I can unsuppress my feature pattern and then my mirror. And then unsuppress my mirror. There's my grill. Now, Maybe you want to add some kind of logo or insignia that grills sometimes have. Maybe I'll add a channel logo on here. And what I'll do to accomplish that is I'm going to roll back before I made my loft cuts. I can again, just for the interest of rebuilding, suppress my feature pattern. I probably don't even have to worry about mirror because it's just mirroring these guys down here. And I can activate my 2D sketch and maybe I'll just make a quick K logo like I have at the beginning of every video. So now that we have all this, I can say, take my logo, extrude, and we're going to say extrude to geometry, right? This back face. Then I can take my sketch. and do an extrude cut. Well, actually, no, I have to make a new extrude. So I'll select this face, create a sketch. Let's project our whole sketch, right? It should be sketch 11. Create a reference figure with maintained 
association, right? Bam. We'll take that whole thing. We'll do an offset. We'll flip the direction. Point 0.2 looks about right. All right, so fully constrain that if you're serious about the model. Looks like uh, this line came in and that made our sketch not closed, of course, so we'll get rid of that line. That is a really helpful dialog sometimes. So we'll take our sketch, we'll do an extrude cut. Again, two geometry just as a way of expressing design intent. Now, I'll generate the last feature, and we'll bring back our uh, feature pattern. Okay, so now we have a logo with a solid border around it. Uh, so that should be pretty fun. I think Alibre is pretty amazing for allowing us to easily do everything that we just have done. Uh, this is a simple example of many complex and uh, amazing shapes that you can make with Alibre. So good on Alibre and I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.